So I've used AI, artificial intelligence, to create this clone of my face and also a clone of my voice. And then I thought it'd be fun to interview this clone of me on my new book, Forgiving Humanity. Glad to be with you. So I see you've dressed up for this. Well, it is my first appearance in a video. Well, where would you like to start? Well, first tell me why you decided to write this book. I've been interested in exponential growth since I was a teenager. Back then, I realised that continued exponential growth was going to have dangerous social and environmental consequences. And now here we are, 60 years later, facing unprecedented global crises. Now, usually when people look to the cause of these crises, they blame a variety of factors. Capitalism, industrialization, greed, short-term thinking. But behind most of these crises is the stress that exponential growth places on us and the planet. This underlying factor is not normally considered, so I felt called to write a book on it. So what does the title mean? What do we need to forgive ourselves for? I'm not talking about forgiving various actions we've taken that may have caused suffering or contributed to the crises. We should definitely hold people or groups responsible for them. But the acceleration in the pace of change is not of our making. It's an inevitable part of our development, so we are not responsible for that. There is no blame for exponential growth itself. Why do you say it's inevitable? It comes from the feedback loop of innovation breeding further innovation. New scientific discoveries lead to new technologies. New technologies can foster further scientific advances, which can lead to more inventions, and so on. Whenever you have positive feedback like this, you get exponential growth. We can see the overall trend in how the Industrial Revolution happened much faster than the Agricultural Revolution. The Information Age came much faster still. Now we are entering the Intelligence Age, and that will come about even faster. The point is, exponential change is inevitable. There's no slowing it down. The future is coming faster and faster. So is this what you call our blind spot on the future? Yes, we find it difficult to think in terms of exponential change. When we imagine the future, we tend to think in terms of steady linear change. If this much change has happened in the last 50 years, we tend to think that the next 50 years will see a similar amount of change, maybe a bit faster. But generally, we remain blind to the implications of exponential change. When we do take it into account, we see it will likely take only 20 years for a similar amount of change. And after that, only 10 or even 5. Soon it's going to become unimaginably rapid. People talk about the so-called singularity, when AI becomes probably as good as human beings and able to design better AI, leading to even more exponential growth. What happens then? No one knows for sure. All bets are off. It will be a completely different world. But exciting or scary as this may be, one thing we can say for sure is that change will be coming much faster still. Our blind spot on the future leads us to assume that we'll be steadily developing for hundreds or thousands of years into the future. But within just a few decades, we'll have spiralled faster and faster into an unknown destiny. You have two subtitles for the book. You have how the most innovative species became the most dangerous. But also I see a sub subtitle of the curse of exponential change. So, so why is exponential change a curse? This is really the crux of the book. The faster change comes, the harder it is for systems to adapt. Climate change, for example, is the result of our accelerating consumption of fossil fuels, producing carbon dioxide far faster than the planet can absorb it. Accelerating development also lies behind our rapidly depleting resources and growing pollution. Spin a wheel faster and faster, and it will eventually fly apart. Similarly, Ever accelerating rates of development is leading to the breakdown of many of the systems we depend upon. We're moving into a world with technology beyond our dreams, but one that is also breaking at the seams. So the two sort of come together. 
Yes, this is the meaning of the first subtitle, how the most innovative species became the most dangerous. Ever accelerating development inevitably brings in its wake accelerating stress on people, society and the planet. The two go hand in hand. But let me emphasize there's no blame for this. It is the inevitable destiny of any technologically empowered intelligence. So as things speed up, the future is going to become increasingly unpredictable, right? So how do we prepare ourselves for something like that? I like to draw parallels with trees in a storm. First, they need to be flexible and bend with the wind. If we are to survive the coming storm of change, we too will need to be more flexible. We'll need to let go of habitual reactions and assumptions as to how to respond. We'll need to see things with fresh eyes so we can respond creatively to new challenges. Second, a tree needs to have strong roots, be stably anchored in the ground. We too will need greater stability, so that when the unexpected suddenly arrives we can remain relatively cool, calm and collected, not be repeatedly thrown into fear and panic. A third factor that helps trees withstand a storm is being in a forest of trees. They soften the wind for each other. Similarly, we will need the support of others to soften the impact of the unexpected. More than ever, we'll need care and compassion, both for ourselves and for others. And as I said at the start, we should be more forgiving of humanity. The better we understand how we got here, which is what I've tried to do in this book, the better we'll be able to face the times ahead. You talk about this leading to a new story of humanity and our place in the cosmos. What do you mean by that? Yes, but not the sort of new story we often hear about in which everything will be okay if we just wake up and get our act together. When we look at ourselves from a more cosmic perspective, we can see ourselves as a beautiful bud of creative intelligence. The universe contains trillions upon trillions of stars. We don't know how common life is. Maybe it's on just one in a thousand planets. Occasionally, life evolves into intelligent beings such as ourselves capable of love and compassion, the creation of great art, music and poetry. We find meaning in our lives, a sense of justice and an inner wisdom. We are indeed marvellous beings, a miracle of creation. And there is much to celebrate about us. The question is, can we celebrate all that we are while accepting that we may be here for but a brief period of time, cosmically speaking? Wow. It does indeed shed a whole new light on humanity. Well, thank you. I certainly had fun creating this video with you. I thought I created it. Well, maybe in a year or two you'll be able to.